Well, hello and welcome back to the radio room. Still working on the FT-101. Um, if you remember from the past couple of videos, one of the main problems we had is the power switch does absolutely nothing. You plug it in, the radio's on. So I've dug in and uh, looked at that a little bit. What you're looking at right now is uh, on the back. Uh, let's see if the, if the radio is up, it'd be the back left corner on the bottom. So you can see here's the, uh, the power connector. I've got it pulled out a little bit. Um, never mind the camera there. That's where I'm going to show you something a little bit closer here in just a moment. But I figured out why the power switch is not working and it all has to do with being back here. Specifically has to do with these two wires and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's a, a slightly different angle. Here's the, uh, the back of the radio right here where my fingers up here. The, you can see me moving the plug around right back there. So specifically it's these two wires right here. And the problem is they are not wired correctly for the power switch. So I will uh, go ahead and kind of show you uh, here in just a moment what we're uh, going to do as far as checking to see if they are wired correctly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the schematic and we'll see kind of what uh, zoom in here just a little bit so if you remember um, when I was talking about the power cord yesterday um, the power comes in on two and on four on the jack with the switch in between two and three power comes in goes to the switch goes through the switch and then back up to uh, three but also ties in right here and comes down and goes over to the fuse and you know runs to the zero volt tap on the primary of the transformer so I was almost thinking that well maybe something was jumpered in here between these two um, maybe this solder when they soldered this on here this is not the original plug on the back of this radio I did get a chance to talk to the uh, the owner of the radio um, and the switch the jack was installed um, by I guess a, a friend that he has um, shortly after he got the radio the radio was in uh, definitely a most used position and condition before he got it and he said it didn't even have a connector on the back I believe so they put one on it um, and I thought well maybe when they soldered on to two they actually bridged over to three and then that would just take the power switch out of the equation that's not what happened though and I looked at that couldn't find anything bridging between the two so I said well how else would it work to make it so that you you have power coming in all the time <laughs> whether the switch is on or off because I did check the switch I uh, did a continuity test on the switch in the on and off position and the switch works just like it's supposed to which means there's not something uh, paralleling the switch closing uh, the power to it so um, I got to thinking well you know there's there's one other way you could do this if you're putting a, a connector on and what if you accidentally wired these two backwards so remind, remember as long as the power cable is plugged in number two has power on it if you take what the wire that's supposed to go to three and put it on two and the one that's supposed to go on two and put it on three you can see that with powers on two and this wire is connected to there well it's going to have power on it all the time this being over here is just simply not even the only thing it would do is, is take power and put it over onto three but it, it wouldn't go anywhere the switch is there's no switch it's just hanging out there um, decorating the front of the radio at that point so I had to go in there and double check that and 
we'll take a look at this a little bit closer here. Um, I mean, there's just two white wires right there. And it's a little little hard to see where everything's kind of going. You can kind of twist your, your hand around and your head around and try to get everything going. But I wanted to verify what I was thinking. So what I did was just, well, let's just check out what's going on as far as where everything is going to. If we look at the, uh, the schematic again, we can tell because we got to find some other place to find out which wire is going where well we got the fuse holder right here so fuse holder if I check continuity between the fuse holder and three I should have continuity whether the switch is on or not or I can go to the zero tap on the primary which is running through the fuse on both of them and I should still have continuity as long as the fuse is good. So that's what I did. So let's take a look at that and see if we can uh, if we can kind of go from there and and make the and check to see and verify what we're thinking. So I've got set up here to take a look at this. You can see I got the. Uh, DMM set up there it's on continuity right now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go between number two which is down here let me see if I can turn this just a little bit you can kind of see there's I'm not sure y'all can tell that or not but there's a we got the three so I'm going to go to two and two should only go to the switch two should not go to the fuse holder and two should not go to the zero tap which is right there and have continuity. So let's check that. So if I just go to the fuse holder, oh, I got continuity. So our hot line is connected straight to the fuse holder. And if I go to the zero tap, zero volt tap, I still have continuity. Let's go to three. Three should have continuity to those points. As you can see on the meter, it doesn't. Unless I turn the switch on. Well, three is the one that should be constantly connected to those. I should be able to go to two and not have continuity unless I have the switch on. So these two wires are just connected to flip-flopped between two and three on the uh, connector. That's gonna get the uh, get the power switch working again. So one other thing I wanna show y'all, let's see if I can get this set up correctly again. I'm going to move my camera around here see if I can get this back in here in the right spot. Let's see if I uh, got anywhere close. Yeah, pretty close. The other thing I wanted to point out is, remember in the last video I was talking about what I'm thinking is making the chassis hot is a leaky capacitor. And <laughs> there's, there's gonna be a little digging going on here. I'm gonna have to get some stuff out of the way, but right down in here, right there at the end of this straw, is one of those capacitors. The other one, sorry about that, let's see, where is that at? It's even harder to see. It is I'm not sure there's enough light in here to actually see what I'm doing here. It's right here. I'm not even sure that's on camera. Nope. That's let me let me adjust the camera just a little bit. 
So we got one that's right here. This is the 0 0.01. And then right down in there is the 0 0.001. And if I remember correctly, I have to look at the uh, I have to look at the uh, schematic real quick. The 0 0.001 is the one that I'm thinking might be the one that's leaky. So it's the one you, re you can't really see it. It's right there. And to tell you the truth, it don't look pretty anyhow just from looking at it. Um, it, it, it looks like the legs have kind of getting bent around in a weird way and it's kind of cracked the uh, the coating on the outside of it so I'm kind of wondering if there's maybe more damage I can't see it very well I'm gonna have to get some of this stuff out of here in order to uh, to kind of get in there and find out because it's it's down in here a lot of wires and stuff in the way it's it's saw one leg solder to the the chassis so I'll probably get the uh, fuse holder out of here. I'm going to undo these two. I got to undo them anyhow to switch them around on the the connector. Get them out of the way. Might have to to like pull this blue wire off of where it's soldered here. Um, I think I'm going to be half removing this just to get into those really easily. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to damage anything else. I want to get this stuff away from it as much as I can because I'm going to have to do some soldering and it's going to have to be some hot soldering um, especially on the ground terminal or the ground side of those those capacitors I got to get in there and, and really get some heat because that is to the chassis so that's what we're doing right now um, got to get like I said get this out of here at least those two maybe get that one out here just so I can get this wire out of the way probably take the fuse holder out get it out of the way then I can get into those capacitors and pull them out. I'm pretty confident that's why we've got a hot chassis. I did talk to the original owner or the, the owner of it um, and he did say that yes uh, there was times he'd reach up and, and touch one of the uh, the case screws on the top of the radio just you know set his hand up there or something um, where there was some bare metal maybe on a screw or something and uh, he was say he's fine if he was on carpet but if he was standing on concrete something like that something that was providing a better ground he, he'd get a pretty good tingle off of it so we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't fix that as well really from what I'm seeing I think that's about the only thing that can be putting that hundred volts on the chassis so we'll uh, we'll get in there and see if we can't can't make it so it's a little bit less of a uh, adventure operating this radio um, everybody likes to charge out of life they just don't want to be charged in life so I'll get to that and see if we can't get this pulled out and then we'll see if that uh, that power switch works better um, as far as testing it um, so here's how I want to put this um, without those capacitors in there we could take them out and still test the radio just we got to be confident that or we're not going to have a lot of, a really big spike in um, the power line voltage um, and it, it's also not going to be bleeding off RF uh, any EMI that happens to get into the uh, the power line which I think for a short test would be okay um, I'm just not sure like I said I got to order those capacitors I don't have any of those safety capacitors in stock I don't think I'd have to look around um, and see if we can do that but I, I might be able to put it back together enough to test it and see if the chassis is still hot without those in there if it's not then we know that's the problem we replace them we're good to go so that's where we're at um, I'm trying to decide if I want to just just pause the video and come back or uh, I might just put this out here as kind of an update because um, we do know why the power switch is not working um, I'm 99.999 percent confident as soon as I switch those two the power switch is going to work fine um, just got to get those capacitors out of there and I might just wait until I get those in um, just end this video here 
get those in, get them installed, and test it under those conditions because to test it without them in there means everything I took out of the way to get to them, I've got to put back in just to test it and then pull it back out <laughs> to put them in. So uh, we might just uh, kind of have a little gap in you know a week or so between the videos on this radio until we get those those capacitors in and put them in and see if that's uh, what's causing the problem but I'm, I'm pretty confident that's why we have uh, the hot chassis issue so like I said switch those around I'm gonna get those capacitors out of there and I, I guess this radio is gonna gonna sit on the bench for a little bit until some uh, some parts come in I did order a uh, fuse lamp um, it's not exactly the same specification but I did find some that uh, I think will be pretty close and I think it'll it'll still work um, the owner had stated that uh, there was a mishap with some some high uh, an, an antenna wire and some uh, I think line voltage kinda came to each other um, so I think that's what knocked out the fuse lamp and I'm thinking that's possibly the only thing that's wrong with the uh, receive I'm hoping we'll get the fuse lamps in and then we'll see if it uh, picks up the receive quite a bit but I think that's the main problem so let me go ahead and end this here and uh, as soon as we have some parts in we'll have another another uh, installment on the uh, FT 101 with some problems thanks for stopping by and bye for now <laughs>